Hello guys, welcome to Staff Cow. Today is a very special day as it is our first ever episode. Today our guest is Mr. Alcatraz Day. He is an ex-Indian Air Force, author of eight books and an Iron Man. It is a really interesting episode and I hope you guys learn a lot from it because I personally have learned a lot from this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining. Uh, so, sir, like to start, we have read about you uh, a lot on Quora also and we follow you on Instagram, but uh, it there is not not a lot of information about your early life. So, I know you class 10th in Delhi mein kiya and then you moved to 11th and 12th. Hmm. Can, can you please talk about how were you born and brought up in Delhi or then you moved to Bangalore or how you were born somewhere else? No, no, yes, born in Bangalore. Uh, my dad was a, is a, was a central government employee. So okay. then we moved to Delhi. Mm. So I think first two years I was in Bangalore. And then we moved to okay. Delhi. Uh, all my schooling is from Delhi. I studied in Delhi public school. Uh, then I came mm. back to Bangalore in sixth standard where I studied in Bangalore military school for around two or three years, I think. And then again, okay. I went back to Delhi. Then I finished 10 from Delhi. And then again, for 11th and 12th, uh, came to Bangalore, Ken Favor Trail. So a lot of, I've not stayed at one place during my childhood. Okay, so a lot of movement from Delhi to Bangalore. Mostly these two places, right? Yeah, Delhi yeah. to Bangalore, I mean, Bangalore to Delhi. Yes. So that was in Delhi. Which difference was was between Delhi and Bangalore? Any difference? I think in a way it was very good for me to start off with. Like okay. my Hindi ka jo hai, wo baat achha hai. So when I tell someone ah. I'm from Bangalore, they don't believe me. Okay. And then I start speaking in Kannada. Okay. Then mm-hmm. I get my English accent and then they say, okay. huh. Difference? How do I put it? Like, jo stereotypical hai that I don't believe in. Uh, Delhi is mm-hmm. an amazing place. Now it is not that much according to me. Like, Abhi, like if I go, I stay there for two, three days. But the Delhi I stayed in was very different. That time there were no ring roads, there was no metro. Tabo blue line ki private buses chalti thi. It was very different mm. for me. That was nostalgia. Bangalore and Delhi compared, I think infrastructure is Delhi is amazing. Bangalore, again, everyone will tell you traffic is like crazy. But yeah, don't get pros and cons, hai, yeah. but obviously I'll be biased and I'll say nothing low in me. So, sir, uh, there's a very, uh, like a famous story when you were in school mm. and you left home for some time. So, you can tell us a elaborate. So, we also get to know the detail. So, like any kid growing up, I used to watch a lot of Bollywood movies. And, uh, okay. I don't know, that's in 7th standard. So we used to go to the school, but in 10th standard, somehow, mm. um, we got to know. And we watched, I think, two or three movies together. One was Salam, where they are staying together oh. without marriage. That time, we were like, oh, possible. Second movie we watched was Bunty or Bugly. So in that movie, they both run away from their house and you know, they leave their life. And we both decided we'll do it. Unfortunately, that time, Board exams so like we will both run away to the junior valley all this start uh, we decided to run away during my board exams one board exam was over the next one was coming i ran from my house unfortunately she didn't touch so because I had written a letter and all at home, then I was on the run. I'd stolen mm-hmm. some uh, from my dad's debit card and all. So I roamed around for, I think, five, six days, and then I finally uh, I missed Sanskrit. So mm-hmm. then they were like, uh, some of them scolded me, some of them were like, ah, hai. They got me back to Delhi, and thankfully, my principal was very nice. So he said, uh, so I studied in Delhi Karana school in my intent. So they had three languages, English, uh, Hindi, Sanskrit, and uh, Kannada. So luckily, 
CPSC board had given the school option of choosing any two languages. So I was studying Sanskrit and Hindi. Because I missed Sanskrit exam, somehow they managed to change it to Hindi and Kannada. And they all take marks from only one subject. Or so then next day, I think Hindi exam was there. So I gave Hindi exam after like studying the stories and all for one day. That's how like principal helped me uh, get through board exams. I didn't have to repeat one year. And then that girl, uh, she, uh, she was in Delhi. I was sent to Bangalore after that to study. And we met after one or two years. And, uh, uh, sir, uh, yeah, the, the, this kind of story I have heard for the first time. So I have not uh, heard anywhere. I, I would not agree with that Tomu part, but I mean, it takes a lot of uh, guts to even do do that. So I don't think at that time yeah. you think about all this. At that time, it's like, yes. ah, okay. uh, so, so like that. Okay. So that this was continuing till eleventh and twelfth also. Eleventh and twelfth, I was in KV. Uh, that time there were no mobile phones, too. so um, I think Orkut was there. Orkut, yeah, Orkut was there, and we I think we reached. So this was, I think, two thousand six to two thousand eight. Wala period. Uh, yes, two thousand six to two thousand eight. Uh, so Orkut and that Orkut. So Usme, I think there was a feature called Scrapbook where you could drop a message for someone on the board, and we reached out again. And then we talked. I again uh, flight at home and went and met her in that stand. And uh, I think after that, I got serious. I like, enough, abhi ho gaya. Then focus was on NDA and cleared NDA. So I like, went into NDA and we used to talk sometimes. But yeah, I was over all that. So I was reading your uh, jo apne story that you put in You mentioned uh, like drop in your percentage also, 10 to 12. Mein. So this, like, this was the uh, reason or... Which I one of something else was going on in that. One of the reasons, yes. Also, till the 10th, I was in such a safe environment, thanks to my parents. He, like, it was school, go curricular activities, school studies, and then again, like, evening, may one or two hours of play, and then again, sleep. I was in such a safe environment growing up. Suddenly, I came to Bangalore. 11th and 12th standard, I got exposed to so many things. Like, it's that adolescent phase of life, right, where all your friends are talking about things that yeah. you've not heard of. People were talking about IITs, people were talking about getting into bits. Everyone was like, and yeah. on the other hand, they were talking about things that male kids in the age of 16 and 17 talk about. So all that was a revelation that time. And I was free. Like I had complete freedom. I was staying with my uncle. I used to take a bus, like a city bus, go to school come back in a city but so the, suddenly my exposure levels were very high so I was like oh the dunya is like this world is like this whereas in Delhi it was a very close and safe environment so I think I got distracted yes obviously the girl was one of the reasons but obviously I also didn't study so yeah the, the exposure sort of like changes drastically 10 to 12 you yes, talk yes. about start talking about really different things when you're in 10, in, when you're in 12, it changes completely. Like, yeah. Uh, I think in 10 standard, the only thing was to and marks layer. Everything will be sorted. But in 12th, 11th mm -hmm. and 12th, you start talking about things like college, mein hai, what you will study. If they come number, I right. you will not get. What are the kind of salary packages you are looking at? And I always wanted to get into NDA. There were two or three films talking about that. Then there's this whole concept of bunking, which was new to me. We used to bunk classes. I had never done that in my life. Right. I was such a studious, straightforward student. But in 11th and 12th, I did all that. And suddenly, like life, my perspective and outlook basically changed thanks to those two years. So, oh, sister, but you got inspired from somewhere or you were always like, I want to join NDA join karna and then Air Force. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So there was an inspiration that pushed my me. My uncle was in the Air Force. But like I looked up to him. 
but wearing the uniform and how people greet you, how people salute you when you go out, that thing was there. I stayed with him for a few days as well. So I've seen the environment in Air Force, how much respect you get. And on top of that, I used to see these planes flying around. I stayed in Delhi, so every time Republic Day happened, we used, we used to see those uh, fly paths of all the fighter planes going over uh, India Gate and Asha But I always, I, I was always like, you know, I really admired that. And then by the time I reached into main intention, slowly, slowly, Pata Laga, there's a UPSC exam you have to write. And uh, then we clear it, then there's something on SSP. Thankfully, I had people, teachers in my school to tell me, how this is the way, this is the way. So, yeah, but yeah, that was my sole focus, ki NDA hi jana hai. Or whatever I studied, was like, NDA mein ye aayega ya nahi aayega. Agar ye nahi aara, I won't study. I had no plans okay. of joining IIT or AI Trickly used to be there at that time. We've always focused ki NDA hi jana hai. Did did top gun play a part? No, because because I knew it's it's all shake. Thankfully, I knew like it looks nice in movies. Top gun. I my first first movie of my life was Border. I think that also uh, okay. Uh, you know, kind of inspired me. But I knew ki this is not exactly how Top Gun was way off. Even now, when people hmm. ask me ki hey Top Gun, like actually, my sir, kuch nahi hota. Just nice to see you. Okay. But yeah, one movie that completely influenced me was when I was in ninth or 10th, there's a Ritik Roshan movie called Luck, where he goes to IMA right. and joins the yeah. So yeah, that was very influential. So I was reading like one of your Quora articles on like Top Gun. I thought of asking you that, that were you uh, also sort of influenced by that movie? Because I've heard a lot of people. So from the outside, it looks like everything which is shown in that movie is true. Uh, someone who's not in on the inside believes it to be. Just wanted to ask you. Love mm-hmm. you. And then we'll touch upon this in the later part, but I'm talking about preparing so and so sir, uh, how so you were preparing while you were in school for that uh, UPSC examination you started post your twelve. So uh, basically, India got written examination. Hota. So syllabus is same as mm-hmm. in 12 standard. So I said, no, like, mm-hmm. whatever I used to study, I used to see. India syllabus is not in That's how it is. Like, there's no special uh, coaching or any specific studies that I did for the written specific. And for SSB, I think there's a uh, interview process and yes. in everything involved. So, uh, I remember, uh, I think my engineering counseling had happened. I had gotten places in two or three uh, colleges. I went to two of them also for two days. And then the results came in. Ki, uh, written in has clear, you have been called for SSP. Then I immediately quit the college. Uh, I uh, First of all, I, I always knew that there are so many. There's a psychological test. Mm-hmm. There's a medical test. There's a physical test. There are group discussions. Just that. Uh, so I started reading that, that you get a few books where you get to know all these professors. That time, I think YouTube had just started getting craze in India. So there were a few videos on YouTube where they were showing you what happened. So I did all that. I think for two days, I went to some retired colonel also. I don't remember his name right now. And then he, along with a few more candidates who were giving SSP, he told us, Ki, like, what is the procedure? What can you expect this time? So I think within... Six days after the letter came, I went to my for my ASS. Okay. So, sir, so, suppose someone who is pre- who listens to the podcast and who is preparing for SSB, would you like to give them any tips how to go about it? One simple tip I'll give everyone. Don't go for coaching. There's no need to go for coaching. What these coaching centers do is one, they take basically one of money can do, which is useless. Second, they teach the same thing to everyone. And it's not a written exam. SSB whole point is to assess your personality and every individual's personality is different. If 100 people study from one coaching center, those 100 people give, will give the same kind of answer. It will be a pattern that the officers in SSB will recognize. 
and that is you not being you. So the best thing you can do is be honest. Uh, whatever comes to your mind, speak it. If you are deserving, you will get recommended. Don't go for coaching. Don't waste your money and time. Right. So coming to NDA now, which is like a very important part. Obviously. So how was the first day like? I remember uh, the moment I was going to Pune to drop me. So the NDA bus came from Pune railway station. They took us to NDA. Uh, they allotted this cordons to me. I got Delta. And mom and dad had lunch with me and the bus left. I still remember that image. Then leaving and the bus waving by at me. And then there were some 15, 16 new cadets. And I think uh, vacations were still going on. So most of the academy hadn't come back. So it was just the new guys. And one senior was there to take care of us. And that night we slept. If some debugging was happening in this cordon, so there was no bed, no mattress, nothing. It was December 26th, 2007, I think. Yeah, 2007, December 26th. It was, it was cold. And uh, that, that's the first day I met most of my cosmetics. So you get academy numbers. So all the academy and numbers who were right next to me, they all joined the same day. And the very next day, all the seniors came. And then, like, it was hell. And that image of mom and dad waving by stayed with me for a long time till the time I was, like, a junior in the academy. So, before we dive in, I uh, just wanted to understand how the structure of NDA is. So, we know what happens as we know the output, but how is it structured? Like, you mentioned squadrons. Right? So okay. Is that, like, very squadron-oriented? Or? Okay, so... When I was there, there were 15 squadrons from Alpha to Oscar. I was in Delta. Uh, now there are 18 squadrons, I think. They added three more. You're not audible. I think you're a new. Oh, I'm audible to you. You're not audible. So now I can hear you. Okay. You can hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so I was saying basically there are 15 sorry, squadrons. Sorry. 15 squadrons yeah. from Alpha to Oscar. I was in Delta, which is the fourth squadron. I think in my last semester, they added three more. Okay. So there are 18 now. And now I'm sure they added one more for the girls. Not sure how exactly it's structured. But when I was there, there were 15 squadrons. Yeah. Most of the training, most of the everything happens squadron by day. Before you join Academy, you're allotted your service, Army, Navy, or Air Force. And for yeah. the first four semesters, you do basic training with everyone. In your fifth and sixth semester, Air Force guys go do flying, Navy guys go do sailing and study their own subjects, and Army guys go do their own Army training. Uh, on top of all this, so four squadrons form one battalion. So Alpha, Bravo, Chadi, Delta is battalion one, then Echo, Foxhot, Golf Hunter is battalion two, and so on. So that's how it's totally structured. But uh, the major good aspect of NDA that most people don't realize is that there are four major things that you focus on. One is your uh, studies, which forms like 20-30% of your curriculum, your training. Second is your physical training, uh, which is your PT, what you call outside. But in NDA, it's a little bit more rigorous. So you have to pass tests in all of them. So if you don't clear your academic test, you can't go home in your vacation. So if you don't clear your PT tests, can't go home no. or uh, think. So there's academics, there's PP, there's one thing called drill, which is your March pass. Basically, it's a very important component of NDA training. And then there are other small, small things uh, like there's swimming, there's equestrian, which is your horse riding, uh, two, three more small, small events which happen across. But yeah, everything that happens, it happens at a squadron level. And in one semester, on an individual level, whatever you do is calculated for everyone in that squadron and the squadron which performs the best is declared the champion squadron. So this entire thing is not just for you to perform well, for you to go home. It's also for your squadron and your squadron mates to win the championship. So it's like a three-layer competition slash education curriculum that keeps going on all the time. So basically, you were like... Uh put into the Delta squadron, right? Yeah. So 
you so the entire so mostly 90% of your time is with your squadron yes okay. yes so is there inter- interaction between other uh, squadrons or, or it's just yes, limited yes, to your yes. squadron for example when i go to classes like i studied hmm. uh, computer science so there were people from right. other squadrons who were there so in academics we do interact with everyone especially during the classes okay. and the squadrons are all nearby it's not like we don't interact right. at all okay so on top of this yeah. we also have a course mix right if i am in one to one course hmm. there will be 300 people across all squadrons in my delta squadron in one to one course there were only 20 people there will be 20 yeah. more people in echo and fox so they are all my course mates i would know them personally so now coming back to uh, your journey so so like to say ki when the senior arrived then things uh, start to happen so what 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 were the things that uh, go on there because from the outside the nda is perceived to be there there's a different perception to nda right but what i have heard from different podcasts and uh, like the, from different sources that when you enter nda the sort of old you is broken down and then the uh, like a new person is created there so what yes. goes on and what happens inside if you give a sneak peek into that i'll actually first tell you the thought when i that thing on the last time the passing out but i thought i would be so happy ki ye teen saal khatam ho gaye but when i came out the mom dad uncle sister were there they come for my passing out but i was going you know like a lot of thought i could not imagine leaving that stage like even now if i meet someone from india if i meet a junior and a senior i meet a classmate we just sit and talk about india for hours together most of my course mates are married and if i meet them with their wives so their wives just go they know ki ha ye do londe mil gaye hain aise india ki baat karne ka sochta they go and sit on the side there's mm-hmm. some kind of bond connection and uh, respect we have for the squadron and the academy But regarding the journey and quickly tell us some of the influence in it uh, i was very good at academics i was very good at pt because Uh, in even my line for sanal doctor that i used to do a lot of physical exercises but i knew in the mcam era generally i was good in academics but there was one thing i was really bad at and that is running and running is like the backbone of indian athletics if you are not a good runner means you cannot be a good soldier so in outside standards i was a good runner but the standards are so high inside I, for example uh, we used to have a cross country event every 6 months so and whoever wins that it's like they are the fittest and the strongest of all the squadrons in this time the first guy used to come in like 38 39 minutes for 12 km and i used to come in 54 59 which is an amazing timing outside even now if you tell yeah. someone you can yeah. run 12 km in 54 59 minutes like really good speed but there inside the academy that was bad so that was one weak point of me. I, i had according to people there and i had a very good friend karthik there he's in the air force now me and him were very close like we were like really good friends he was also bad at running and he was good at pt he was good at academic so in the first two terms we spent together most of the time uh, we wake up at like 3:34 uh, you cannot switch on lights before 4:30 and uh, all the juniors were supposed to like have a daily shave so we used to go to the washrooms shave in the dark uh and get ready by like 4:30 then go wake up all the seniors get them tea get them okay. milk then make sure our uh, you know if we have pt or if we have classes or if we have horse riding wear those clothes and get ready so leave the squad in by like 5 5:15 then there are two classes which happen from 5:30 to 7:30 at then you have breakfast then from 8 to 2 you have your academics classes nobody studies in academic classes because you're so tired all the time you just sleep so if someone has to keep you awake in academic classes in india that means they have to be really good and there are a few teachers like that there is a teacher i think physics and english as a like you just used to sleep it's like 40 minutes you sleep you get up and then you go to the next class in that also you're sleeping and again 14 minutes to sleep go to the next class 
Then at two, there's lunch. You have lunch, you come back to this cordon. By 2.30 again, depending on whatever event is going on. So there's either cross country or football or hockey or basketball. So from 2.30 to like almost 5.36, you are sweating it out somewhere or the other. Either you're running. I used to make me run a lot because I was bad at it. So I used to wear like three, four sweaters, wooden sweaters. And it just used to make me sprint on uphills. Uh, apparently, that's how you, your endurance increases. I used to do that. If the cross country was over, then it was football. If football was over, then it was basketball. Some of the other things were going on. Then from 6 to 6.30, you get time to like take bath, sit down. 6.30 to 8 is study period. Where you study, pretend to study. Again, you're tired, so half of the time you're sleeping. Then 8 o'clock, it's dinner. Then 8.30 to 10.30, again PT. Like, you prepare for all the PT tests. There's a lot of things that you have to do. Like, pull-ups, chin-ups. Like, for an example, in second term, you have to do eight chin-ups. You have to run 2.4 kilometers in under nine minutes. Uh, then you have to do 25 really, like, flat push-ups. So, you prepare for all those PT tests. And then 10.30 is the lights out, official. And after... 10.30, like all your uh, things start wearing, like let's say you did something wrong. Senior will call you, will talk to you, will punish you a bit. By the time you sleep, it will be like 11.30, 12 most days. And then again, you wake up at 3.34. This is what happens as a junior till the time you reach your third or fourth semester. You basically try to pass your PT, you pass your academics and become a senior. So those two years, I would say are even now in we course mid stock, it's those two years which has made me especially mentally very uh, soundproof. Like I'm like, is it the worst chaos at that? Nothing. I tell you an instance, there was one uh, con leader who had crashed during Kargil war. Most of you would have heard his name, Nachiketa, con leader Nachiketa. He was con leader that time. Now I think he must be a wing commander of the group. So he, he was caught by the Pakistanis. He was a prisoner of war there for some time. He came back and someone asked him, how was it? And he was like, it was better than NDA second. <laughs> wow. So yeah, then you become a senior. Uh, I think in fourth term, I did certain things. I had my um, commandant's computer because the password was same for everyone. It's not like I mm. hacked or something. I just like used his... Uh, computer and sent a mail that I should be excused just because I wanted to sleep for half an hour more in the morning. That time it seemed very silly, but it's a huge discipline issue. So they relegated me back. So I had to repeat six months of my fourth semester. But then my life changed. Then I got into flying and uh, I was really good at studies. I was really good at flying. So my fifth and sixth semester in NDA were like really good. Once you get into those Air Force flying loads and you study about planes and you start flying. I think I enjoyed those two semesters. That one year was really good. I passed out best in flying, best in Air Force cadet this time. And yeah, that was like most of my journey. In the so in, in, in the, uh, the fifth and sixth terms, basically, so so when you actually fly, uh, what kind of do you, uh, what do you, what do you fly actually is what I want to ask. Do you fly helicopters or do you fly? No. So there's a very basic uh, glider in India called the Super Demona. It's basically okay. to give you flying experience and how flying works. But okay. Flying would be, I would say, 20 to 30 percent of the curriculum. 70 percent is ground subjects. Like you study about aerodynamics. You study about uh, air frames, you study about aero engines, you study about meteorology, which is the weather reading and all this stuff. Then you study airmanship, which is basically your rules and guidelines, do's and don'ts of the flying and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't fly any jet or helicopter in India. It's only from there when you graduate or the Air Force Academy, you do that. So the last two terms is when you like, actually go and uh, fly. You get some kind of flying experience. Before that, it's all... Uh, theoretical and try to yeah so the fourth so comes to it like the same for everything everyone. everyone it's same for everyone so for example when i was flying in fifth and sixth 
army cadets will do a lot of map reading a lot of shooting firing a lot of you right. know uh, patrolling drills navy guys they go to uh, the lake which is there in india peacock bay they do a lot of sailing they do a lot of astro navigation they do a lot of uh, basic navigation skills mast putting all that stuff that is so there are a couple of things that i have heard about so uh, first termers are not supposed to walk they are all supposed to run inside yeah in 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 the camp is that true it is true so first termer second termer third termer they outside squadron to they run there's no you cannot see a junior walking it's like a sin and uh, it when i became a senior i realized why it is like that. because most of them they come they are very weak physically this type so they just run like, i used to think kyu hai ye but thankfully my endurance had become so good by the time i reached fourth or fifth time i understood why but yeah it is very annoying but it is what it is first time was cannot walk and uh, so there is one more term that i have heard nagra right is 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 this so you cannot walk you just only have to run is it part of that nagra that uh, cadets go through or nagra is no, something no, no, else no, 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 is right any kind of physical condition Oh, I feel like I'm not doing anything. I'm not physically fit. So there's a uniform also for that. So if I call you in PT right. jersey, which is your green sweater and black shorts, that means you're gonna get right. punished. So if I have to okay. punish someone, I'll just say 3 p.m. Come to my cabin in PT jersey. That means I'm gonna give you a grade. That's like a unwritten rule all over the academy. In most of the Which is also even now. If you are called in PT jersey, it means you are gonna get physically. Commission money is there, and he is in the hmm. Gorkha Rifle. Okay. So, so nice. uh, we have to talk about uh, Captain Manoj Pandey. So, there is a science blog named after him. So, can you share any sort of anecdote? Not limited to, of course, Manoj Pandey sir, but there are any other anecdotes that you can share. I mean, I have been. I all interesting. I mean, yeah. He, he was very senior, right? Like. Uh, I think I saw LOC before turning into you. So I most of us had a, like a image in our mind. Ki yar kya banda tha. And then we came. Then we saw ki science block unke naam pe rakha hua hai. So that was like another big thing. Uh, anecdotes per se. Oh yeah, there's one very famous. I think I've written also about this. So on Sundays, if you have done anything wrong during the week, like you were late to the class. Or you found sleeping this time. So there's a punishment hike called Singard hike. There is a Singard mountain there, and uh, yeah. so you have to basically go running from academy till the base, climb all the way up, and it's pretty huge. It's very huge. You have to climb all the way up, take a token from the drill instructor there, come back to the academy within five hours. And most people do it in like four and a half five hours. But I think Manoj Pandey, sir, who holds the record for the fastest time ever. Not sure what exactly is the time, but it's like some two hours, twenty or thirty minutes, and it is far. Like from academy, the base is some twelve kilometers, I think. Then you have to climb all the way up and again come back, and you are not just running. You are in full camo, wearing leather shoes, holding a big haversack backpack, scale be bolte or something, which is like some. Ten to twelve kgs, and to run in that at that speed, it's almost impossible. That is one of I think most famous anecdotes that we have heard of him. And I think he was from I forgot what squadron he was. He was from Mike, not Shaw. So yes, uh, he's immensely respected in the camp. So anything about anyone else that you can remember? I remember. Uh, Did I get a picture of him? The Tara guy, the one with the last thing just now. The part is him. He was one twenty-three Lima, and uh, so Delta Lima Sisters Con. So basically, Sisters Con means if people from Lima come to Delta, Delta people cannot punish them. They're supposed to be friendly. Same like if I go to Lima, they cannot uh, punish me. I've seen him. Two three times I've seen I I didn't see one two seven uh, Umar Fayaz one two eight I think Umar Fayaz he was from Mice Con uh, even now when I go every time there's a huge photo of him 
uh, in this mm. quarter. Really, really proud of him. He uh, died a martyr for the country. I've seen uh, people like uh, there's a course mate in Hunter, uh, like left mid Achyubev. He was from the Rashtrian Indian Military College. Amazing guy. Like there was nothing he was not good at it. Cross country medals, basketball medals, anything. He was good at everything. And he passed away in an accident. Uh, when he was flying, I think in Bangalore. Then there's Major Nishan Dogra, uh, Golf 121. He was my bench mate in academics classes. Like, really good guy. He got relegated because he broke his hand by mistake. So he was technically my senior, but he was studying with me. I think I've been with him for four terms every day. That means two years every day. And then I heard the news. Okay, Major Nishant is no more really sad. So many people, I Delta 120, uh, Naval Officer Rajni Kant, again, one course senior to me. I think he passed away in an avalanche around one and a half years ago. The list is endless. Like, I feel proud, but I also feel sad that I personally knew all these people and I know how they were in reality. And now that I think back, that, yes, it's part of what we signed up for, it's part of what these guys do. Uh, there are a lot of people who like had very tiny scares and somehow managed. Like I have a junior, won't take his name. Uh, he had a crash in mid-23. Thankfully, his parachute opened up and he landed right in the middle of Jodhpur. Uh, same crash, but he survived. So there are a lot of stories like that also, I think. When people uh, survived, a few of my course mates got hit. I think they are in here, they got in there, but they're still alive, still in the services, still doing great. They have, the stories are endless. I love them talk about this like for like two, three days. Like, so I'm just uh, wondering, sir, for a young uh, cadet who's gone into the academy, then hearing all these stories must have, must be really inspiring and motivating for them. Yes, uh, it, 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 it more than Did this have an effect on you as well? Yes, it, it does. Like I think more than inspiring and motivating, it, it it you know reassures, reaffirms your belief in what you're doing. Let's say some junior or some NDA aspirant today, when I I meet a lot of them, I tell them these stories, then they get reassured ki, how whatever I'm doing is right because someday people might talk about me like this with respect, with admiration. And I think those things you can only earn. No offense to other academic pursuits around the world, but this is something that genuinely, even for two, three minutes, if someone talks about you, they will feel proud. Ki, yes, I knew a soldier who did this, who did that, and that, that is this price. I mean, like, so from an outsider's view, I mean, uh, it, it is really, uh, is really in, inspiring and motivating for me to hear about these stories because, uh, we, from the outside, our lives are not on the line. Yes. We, we must be doing something which is like contributing to the society and in general. But we are, our lives are not on the line. And But uh, people like you and other people who have served, I think, and who have gone through that process, they are ready to like sacrifice their lives for the country. So that, that becomes a really different uh, experience for people like us who are on the outside. I would also say, and I teach it to everybody. Yes, that is one way where you can show your valor, your courage, your uh, supreme sacrifice towards the country. But it's not the only way. Uh, yeah. Because even when you get into Army or Air Force or Navy, only 1-2% to of those people will ever get a chance to go and you know be on the front line. Not everyone does. Let's say you're in logistics or admin. Probably you will have one or two postings where you are uh, in a battlefield or something. Otherwise, you won't. Only people who are in infantry or they're attached to other infantry units will actually go and say fight, fight. So that percentage would mm -hmm. be very less, max 4 to 5 percent. Air Force, Navy, so not even that much. So just because you are sitting outside or I'm sitting outside today, it doesn't mean that I don't have a way. There are thousands of ways. But yes, mm. 
we should respect people who are doing that for us without asking anything absolutely so uh, now that you have passed out uh, from the nda you go to uh, air force academy so how was that experience or what was the transition because then something again happened in your life uh, when you joined air force academy so you could uh, talk about it was was that uh, already started when you were in india or it started happening when when you joined afa no no when i joined when i joined so i think after you pass and you know you feel like you are the king of the world ab indian wali hai teen saal ke kya hai ji yeah yeah so we went to afa but we were in for a shock because most of the instructors there were ex nd and they felt the same 10 15 years ago mm. <laughs> okay they took care of us made sure that our self respect in class afa is amazing for ex nd especially afa is like a uh, civil world it was generally uh, compared to army and uh, other uh, institutions is chill little bit more of freedom is there and for ex india it's like mm-hmm. nothing we have done worst in that we have come out like ha what as i said no i have done india second term third term so there's nothing more worse you can do to me but yes uh, because you actually start flying in jets so you have to study a lot your focus is completely on flying and i had an amazing instructor manish navy sir uh wherever you are sir i talked to him i think one year ago but yes amazing instructor uh, i flew i studied a lot i uh, complete freedom but so by the time you do certain number of sorties sorties are basically your instructional flying one instructional flying session is called a sort So after you do ten or twelve sorties, mm-hmm. you're supposed to fly solo and do a solo check right. where they clear you to fly solo. But till that time, I was doing really well, but I think something got to me and I couldn't clear my first solo check. I flew three or thrice again with my instructor. I couldn't clear my second solo check, and then only one chance is left. And the pressure is so huge. Imagine I've done three years of India, then again four or five months here. and now my entire uh, fate of becoming a fighter pilot or just a pilot it just came down to that one day you will i clear the third solo check or not i think and then it got to me because i was so passionate about it uh, i didn't know how to control it and i think again i have i just escaped from air force academy came home for a week uh, i was blank I didn't know what to do. My dad convinced me, and I realized yes, I should have. Uh, so we went, uh, and we talked to the commander. And my doctor was very supportive. He understood, like he knew me inside out. He understood what I was going through. Uh, we talked about it, and then they said, "Okay, fine. So you're not going to be flying anymore because, anyways, your third solo check was pending, and now that you have done this, you cannot fly anymore." And I was like, okay, could make sense. I will take the permission. Thankfully, mm-hmm. navigation uh, that year they had opened up slots for WSOs. WSOs are basically people who sit behind the cockpit, like in Top Gun. They are called RIOs. Mm-hmm. In India, they were called uh, WSOs, weapon system operators. So I thought I'm really lucky. I still have a chance. Yeah, I can fly, but I won't be probably holding the joystick and all. But I'll be controlling everything. Else. and weapon system operator is a very like prestigious thing so from there air force academy i went to navigation training school which is in hyderabad bigampet studied there for 6 months pass out flying colors again i was really good at it you know to be the and the thing is for those 6 months i was not in touch or contact with anyone who was actually flying i was in navigation training So all my course mates who had become fighter pilots, I had no contact with them. But when I reached Peter, I saw 120 of them. Uh, and this is exactly where the complex set in. These 120 people were those people I used to teach in India because I was good at study. Most of them okay. passed out or because I taught them certain things, those concepts. Everyone came to me that time, but. Obviously, I was very mature that time. What I saw was 
कि आई एम नॉट फ्लाइंग एंड ऑल ऑफ यू हंड्रेड इडियट्स आर फ्लाइंग फाइटर्स विच वॉज माई ड्रीम एंड दैट कॉम्प्लेक्स इज गॉट टू मी सो बैडली like there was no escaping it and i think that was a trigger and it took another one and a half two months where i constantly tried to get out of it but i couldn't and then the proper trigger happened i don't know and i have no memory of it so almost i think 3 to 4 months i still don't have any memory of what happened i have glimpses like have you seen movies no ki somebody was sedated and he's been taken there to aakhi kholi to usko kuch dikha that's exactly what i don't know and till that time i i never drank and never smoked no form of drugs so there's no way i was on something else but by the time for for in a half months this entire clinical depression this partial schizophrenia got over me i was in lot so that night in Peter, I was flying. And three and a half, four months later, finding myself in the beach. No clue. All I know is that I had run out, and it had become a very perpetual habit. Ten standard, I had run out. Eight plus academy, I had run out. Again, here I had run out, and I had no clue what to do. I had money. बिकॉज एयरफोर्स का वो एक दो महीने का सैलरी आया हुआ था इट टेक नॉट ऑल द कैश ऑल दिस है बैंगलोर श्रीलंकन स्पाईस्तानी whatever so all these theories have some of them thought that uh, i had ran away with the girl again like i kidnapped her and i took her and i ran away so all these theories had thought i came back went back to air force uh and they came to know ki yes i had come back to bangalore they came they picked me up uh they took me back and but uh, most of them understood my situation thankfully was most people are generally passionate and they know what happens when you don't uh get what you want uh almost for three months i was kept under arrest so officers ka under arrest is very different they just keep you in a room and you get food mm. three times a day from the officers mess and people can come and talk to you you just can't get out of the room wala just call it close arrest and then i fought a case with the fos asking them to take me back but because the psychiatrist and all they said you know he was not mentally stable that time it doesn't make sense this that so they let me go this entire procedure is called court martial court martial doesn't mean ki you have been dishonorably discharged from the forces this that court martial is the procedure the conclusion was if they let me go or emotional and mental and this took almost like 6 7 months so professionally and personally also things were going on these were going on simultaneously or the personal the personal issues that were uh, happening in your life led to uh, this so i have talked about this to my therapist afterwards hmm. one of the hypotheses that uh, people have is that somewhere i had buried a lot of things inside me during nba before that and i never talked about it There was a lot of grief inside me, which was building, building, building. And on top of that, this not being able to fly happened, which was like a huge trigger. And then one more trigger was seeing all my close friends and close mates flying. So there were like a thousand things that I had not talked about to anyone. Thousand things that I had not grieved for, grieved for, and all of it came together. And I was immature, very. As I said, no, if you. Think about what all I have said to you now. But till ten standard, I was in a safe environment. So I had never seen failure. Every year, I used to come first in my class. I've never seen failure. Never, no rejection. The first girl I went and asked out, she said yes. No failure, no rejection. And suddenly, eleventh and twelfth, my whole perspective changed. Then I went into India. My self confidence was about. You have to India, Nikal. Then spent three years in India, going through hell. 
again self confidence was so high and then suddenly that dog that, that was literally my first dog for in my life not being able to fly and i think that triggered me that triggered me very bad like you talked about the fact that you had not seen any sort of downfall before and that triggered you when you started seeing because eventually for everyone in life jab log apne safe space se bahar nikalte hain there are going to be some decisions it has it happens with everyone yeah so so hypo if hypothetically or in reality also this happens if someone is going out of that comfort zone someone who is student at class and going out of the comfort zone and if they face a rejection how can they handle the situation better from your experience you have to suffer i mean like na jitna jaldi failure rejection hoga to jaldi dil todao jaldi dhoke khao jaldi interview mein fail ho jitna jaldi ho sake acha to by the time you turn 22 23 अगर तुमने तीन चार धोखे खा लिए है रिलेशनशिप्स में जॉब्स में करियर वाइज यू आर सेट फॉर लाइफ बिकॉज नाउ यू आर नॉट केयर ऑफ इट है ना पापा ने पहली बार थप्पड़ मारा होगा तो दर्द हुआ होगा दूसरी बार मारा होगा दर्द हुआ तीसरी बार दर्द नहीं होता क्योंकि पता है क्या फील होने वाला है सूर्यर यू गेट यूज टू बी स्ट्रगल रिजेक्शन पेन इट इज बेटर आई वॉज अनलकी और वट एवर माई सिचुएशन लाइक मैंने कभी देखा ही नहीं था ये सब इन दैट टाइम नो बडी टॉक्ट अबाउट मेंटल हेल्थ के उस जमाने में तो इंटरनेट भी नहीं था तो इट्स बेटर जितना जल्दी हो सके फेस रिजेक्शन सफर थ्रू दैट एगनी मेंटल ड्रामा जो भी तुम्हें लगता है इट इज बेटर एंड थैंक गॉड कि भैया ये मेरे साथ हुआ जो भी बुरा होता है ना वो अच्छे के लिए होता है थैंक यू सर यू हैव दैट एक्सपीरियंस अभी मेरे साथ कुछ होगा आई नो एग्जैक्टली हाउ टू रियक्ट टू how to control my own it's a very good thing. so sir now that you look back at that situation do you uh, regret it any of it any of the action i like okay jo hua i accept I it and then one regret one uh, is not wearing the uniform that's it okay or we regret it matlab i'm grateful all that those things happened to me i have been in the shittiest mindset to mind frame मैं कभी सोचा भी नहीं था कि लाइफ में कुछ भी कर पाऊंगा उस मोमेंट के बाद लाइक अर्निंग मनी वो चीज हुई थिंग मैंने वो ना पैसे भी कमा पाऊंगा लाइफ में आपने The only regret I have is that I don't get to wear the uniform, but I make sure that whoever comes to me for counseling, you know, they are yeah, wearing it. So, in that, I become very happy. As I said, you should go through all these bad things in life. One day, look, you are not going to do anything. You are not going to write a book about it. You are not going to make a movie. You are not going to do anything. You are not going to do anything. Everything, if everything is perfect, then. It's boring. I know yeah. people who have perfect lives. I mean, perfect family, no financial issues, perfect engineering degree, perfect job, got married, perfect life, perfect home loan sanctions, gadi, but just sad hai. But by the time they turn thirty five, forty, go through under feel like it. Like that. I mean, what can I do in life? What is it? So, do the thing. Do it. And you learn from your mistakes you become mature from your mistakes or aisa to hai nahi ki i won't do more mistakes ho sakte mujhe sir yes it's important to like suffer a little bit here or there so better prepare to handle it so there's one more thing that i wanted to ask so after you left uh, the academy uh, you started teaching uh, dance to some kids yeah Does dancing help you? Did dancing help you at moment? जब आप when you're facing is that so, something of a escape? वो कोई not थे तो उस समय कुछ और आता नहीं था मेरे को मतलब you studied in India the only thing you know is to run or do PT or fly those three things I couldn't do I used to dance I was very famous in academy for dancing so I thought I'll go join some dance coaching ask e what can be done then i took some classes i used to take classes for kids i think i took it for some three four months to make like uh, 1500 2000 in a month 
படிக்கிறது லைக் ஃபீஸ் ஒர்க் இட் ஐஸ் டு மேக் சிக்ஸ் தௌசண்ட் செவன் தௌசண்ட் தரணும் அது ஒரு டைம் பே லைக் டு சர்வைவ் இட் வாஸ் குட் அண்ட் ஸோ நவ் தி போஸ்ட் ஏர்போஸ்ட் பார்ட் நவ் தட் யூ பீன் டிஸ்சார்ஜ் how is life post that so you were you were working i think uh, you were writing uh, simultaneously uh, you were working somewhere i think and then yeah. you started uh, writing your own books as well so were so, you comfortable why did you choose writing i mean is what i want to the writing yeah. you you could have done i don't know i think it's the most you. easiest thing to do if you don't have a degree so content no. writing but my language is always always good english is good i had good grasp of grammar and syntax thanks to my dad and thanks to all my teachers in india also i used to do a lot of uh, language related things that was the most easiest stuff and like i got bsc computer science and i said i didn't know coding this time i had to survive i had to make money i had to do a job in life so i got into writing i thought i'll write when i got into content writing i thought why why not write a book so okay. i started writing a book uh, like everyone i wanted to write about my love story so i started writing when i was like nahi i have my love story or anything in likhna i will write it so i just changed the topic made it into a thriller and then i released it on amazon like that i think over a period of 3 4 years i wrote 3 4 books doing content writing on the side then uh, oh then i met one uh, navy officer naval officer through kora and he was like he uh, starting a whole company on the line like to be for gi that be easy uh, he was based out of kochi so i quit my job and i uh, and then joined him and for three four months everything was fine setting up the business we are basically trying to build a startup which sells organic coffee uh everything was fine everything was okay yeah, but then suddenly one day uh, me and there were two other people were there we realized we like we have been scammed and been like to a lot uh because yeah. by that time he had taken like one and a half lakh rupees from me which i had taken a loan from someone else and given it to him and he escaped to dubai I don't know where he is. So that startup had to be like closed. A lot of people are owed money. It was a big scam. It was uh, covered by Times of India also. Uh, so I never got that money back. Came back to Bangalore. Started another content writing job. I think it was one or two jobs in that time. And at uh, that time, the guy started doing freelance uh, content writing. I was standing in the field where uh, I was standing around India on my bike. I was with uh, Penya Kumari to Kashmir on a motorcycle. Then I did a lot of rides. And I used to ride. That is the time I started writing on Kora. That exact moment. So basically writing was happening from all around. I got duped in that startup. Started writing on Kora. there i got a little bit of you know fame and popularity here when i used to write then i joined this company where i am i think around 6 6 and a half years ago and that was where my peak of kora was way back he kuch bhi likhta tha to viral ho jata tha like even the shakiest things i've written now i look back i laugh at it uh yeah so then i joined this company been here for almost 6 and a half years now I wrote a few books along the way. So yeah, I think writing was the easiest option to do. Because naturally, it came to me. So we just chose it. So, do who you have coffee? Wala, who startup ka baat kiya. So was he was he an actual naval officer or? No, yeah, he was a naval officer. He did full inquiry. He searched his service number. There were photos of him to prove. Okay. But uh, whatever feedback we got from his classmates and other people was. that he was always like that he used to like take money from people scam them wow i still don't know like one and a half two lakhs per scam quick to kill he was in a huge department he had a lot of cash i have no clue i never understood 
like the three four people we still talk sometimes and we ask the same thing yes he can do it and the most uh, funniest thing is he is doing the same donors in the same name from the bites and the police complaints on his fires he has put in like for cheap just by it and we think yeah it is what it is nothing is help Not, nothing is help like i have written a lot of people have written articles on his on instagram like he had a wife he had two kids so, yeah but we tried that we were like ah theek hai like we would have mental peace then go on we like lost one and a half lives if we had gone behind any or jada chacha then he was like ah theek hai guys koi because all of those transactions are also on a very friendly basis so like really really to cash in deal yeah. so what mm-hmm. will i go and tell the police ki ha maine usse cash diya so we know like the receipt of it or a digital footprint of it he was very smart that way. basically no proof of yeah like so given that, the cash so that, that also shows that he had planned it mm. so you start writing so and then now you've written seven books i are you working on it Yes. Unfortunately, I've been working on my head from past three years, uh, because I've gotten into other things now. I still motorcycle a lot. I like traveling, so I go around on my bike. Yeah, that has reduced a little bit. I still kind of go once or twice a year. At least from the last three years since the lockdown happened, I've gotten back into endurance sport. So initially it was running, then I got into triathlons. and from past two years it's just to be in my focus is like triathlon i train almost 14 15 hours a week got me like it's like it's become like a drug to me that training and all. Mm. so i write sometimes but i don't think anytime soon i'm going to finish so there's no time so why this name sir what what how did you come up with this name the most common question is you and ask me all the time so Uh, when I was publishing my first book, publisher said that Kishore name se to na marketing achhi nahi hoti. It's a very common <laughs> jhalu ka name. So I said okay. Uh, that time I was playing Crisis Two. Crisis Two is a very popular video game. Ah, uh, usme hero ka naam Alcatraz. And then I did okay. some research. Alcatraz is also island uh, off the coast of California. It's a very famous prison. If you have prison, seen yeah. the movie Kayamat. उसमें जो प्रिजन है इट्स इंस्पायर्ड ऑफ एलकेट्राज आईलैंड नाउ इट इज शट डाउन नाउ इट्स अ टूरिस्ट प्लेस बट व्हेन इट वाज एक्टिव नो वन हैड एवर एस्केप्ड इट एंड द टू पीपल और थ्री पीपल हु डिड बाय द टाइम दिस सन एंड रीच द शोर दे डाइड ऑफ कोल्ड सो इट हैड अ वेरी दिस थिंग की नो वन कैन एस्केप इट सो दैट वाज द होल आइडिया ही वंस यू गेट इन टच विद एलकेट्राज और वंस यू रीड हिम और वंस यू गेट टू नो हिम then you are stuck for life like you cannot right so i mean you go by this name everywhere i think ha i up until at least last two years that was the case even then baby instagram baby facebook baby i i find it cool yaar yeah. like it sounds very cool or something it, it is it is cool i must i must say so now coming back coming to the present hmm. so now you have And you're competing in triathlon. So, what made you, like you said in NDA, uh, you're not very good at running now. You were made to improve on that by a lot of uh, training and training and a lot of stuff which you went through in NDA. Um, why triathlon? You always wanted to do it, or something inspired you to do it? So, I think lockdown may. I used to be, I used to be a smoker that time. I picked up smoking after I came out. So I would have quit. So during lockdown, I started basic fitness. I mean, सब शुरू करते हैं ना कि घर पे दो डंबल ले लिए, start है, did that. Nothing was working out. I was still smoking. I started running. Try करते देखते क्या होता है. During lockdown, once a week or twice a week I used to run. And then one day, uh, I think the serious lockdown happened where everything was shut down. so there was no smoke shop for so on for the two weeks i didn't smoke and my running speed increased by almost 10 20% so i quit for two months but again i started thankfully like around one and a half two years ago i properly quit smoking and then i 
started tracking my basic data every day. Basic data as in uh, my heart rate, my resting heart rate, how much sleep I am getting, how does my weight increase when I sleep less or when I sleep more. Started tracking what I'm eating, uh, calories in it, how much protein this that I'm getting, and a lot of data basically what athletes track. And then I saw he since the time I quit smoking, I have become better. Like my sleep is better, my mood is better, and all that stuff. And then uh, if you're generally uh, if you go run in events and all, people always talk about Iron Man. The Iron Man, mm. so like if you become an Iron Man, it's like yeah. you're the fittest person. So people say ki only one percent of world's population, less than one percent of world's population has run a marathon, and less than point zero 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 five percent have done an Iron Man. So I was like, yeah, 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 cheez hai, yeah, karni. Okay. And okay. now because itara sab kuch ho gaya tha life mein, I needed something to prove to myself. Yes, I'm still valid. There's still things uh, Mr. Alcatraz can do. It was mainly just mm-hmm. to for give myself a, a sense of self-respect or self-esteem. But when I then studied about Iron Man, I was like, "Ye to mujhse kabhi nahi hoga." Imagine doing a four-kilometer swim, one eighty kilometers of cycling, and then forty-two kilometers of full marathon of running, and cut-off time is seventeen hours. And not going to happen ever. Maybe it will not happen. But four or five months down the tire time, and I kept at running. I got better at running, and then I went and did a very small triathlon, which was a like a five hundred meter swim and twenty kilometer cycle and some five kilometer run. I did it. I completed it. That then I realized that if I train for like one or two years, I can do it. Then I trained for six months. Those six months, like I trained every day. I followed up and I just did a lot of data. I saw improvement. And this year in Jan, I signed up for Ironman Go, which just held like a week ago. And by that time, I was yeah. in full confidence. Ki up to me, I'll do it around six. Not a big deal. Mm. Very important. Then I did two practice. Events also one in January, one in September, and I would like completed it and with good yeah. amount. So now I think that it has become my lifestyle. This training for triathlon, being fit, asking other people to be fit by making them feel bad about themselves. So this is what has become. I'm thankful that all this has happened in the past two years. But yes, this is what it is. This is the story. So, sir, so for example, if someone is Starting to prepare for it, or uh, even wants to uh, compete in an Ironman sort of tournament or or an event, how should one go about preparing? How should one prepare? First thing is you do a simple test or a race which is happening in your city, a 10k or a 5k run. You run it and see okay. how good or bad you are. It's not about the timing; it's about mm. how you feel when you're running and how fast you recover after the event. Let's say today I ask you to run five kilometers. You will run it in let's say thirty two minutes, thirty five minutes. That's good. But uske baad kaisa feel hoga? Kya do three minutes tak utha hoga, bed ka hoga? Ya ki dus minute mein recover hoga aur sabse hmm. hoga? That is India. That you need to check. Uski avocado khane hai aur bitter cream pina hai nahi. Basic simple cheese dal roti chawal. Us pe stick karna hai. And sleep. Ye three things: training, good food. Good sleep. Good sleep means seven to eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. This is the most important thing. Mm. Body ki sabse jada recovery happens when you sleep. You would have observed the days you don't sleep properly. The next day you are full yeah. irritated. Because body ki recovery nahi hui. Or body under se chilla chilla ke kya hai? Bhai soja soja. These three things, if you can do for six months, one year, you will be able to compete in any Ironman. The cutoff is eight and a half hours for a half Ironman. Anyone can do it walking also. If you can cycle ninety kilometers somehow, can walk and do twenty one kilometers in three three and a half hours. There are people who are aged sixty five, seventy, seventy five, eighty. I saw them running and like both in a fit. So I'm sure anyone who's aged twenty to thirty, thirty five can do around. It's just that you need to have that will and discipline.
So did you see people in their 70s and 70s also competing in that tournament? Yes, so yes. It's yes. like uh, amazing. I'll tell you, every time I go for a running event in Bangalore, there's one uncle who's 90, I think. He's this short. Mm. He comes with his son. Any running event you go in Bangalore, he's there. He's this short, he's bald. He cannot run properly, but he walks fast like this. And everywhere he'll come and run. He runs 5Ks and 10Ks. And you'll be surprised, he's not the last guy who finishes. He, he, he's like pro, com, properly competing. He's not uh, uh, He's not doing it for the sake of it. He's uh, competing. He's competing like small, small baby steps he takes. Obviously, mm. his son is there with him just to make sure he's fine. But he's there. Yeah. I see that there are so many people about 65, 70, when they reach, they realize that they have nothing in life. Mein. When they pick up these mm. people, running triathlon is just one of those. There are so many other things. But yes, I see a lot of people who are old, especially in these Ironman events. Or if you go to a half marathon, marathon, big half marathon, marathons in India, you see a lot of old people. And they are genuinely very fit. Like they're faster than me. You can't imagine a 65-year-old running 10K in 40 minutes. I now do it in like 50 minutes. It's crazy. Wow. Sir, how does your typical day look like when you're training? No, you're, you, are, you are competing right now. How does it... Yeah, so uh, usually because I said no sleep is important, so I get my eight hours of sleep, I will wake up by six thirty seven. It's like what's me five char pan go to my entrepreneur but now mindset. Mm-hmm. It that fades away, I think. You need to get your eight hours of sleep, irrespective of whatever time you sleep. So I wake up by six thirty seven, seven go I get up, I do ten, fifteen minutes of maps running or strength training some kind of i don't like to like get tired too much in the morning uh, my office is one mm. and a half hours so i have to leave early on. so then 7 38 i leave home by 9 i reach office now we have shifted to a different role now i'm not a writer anymore i've gotten into project management and all so i'm handling a team so no and most of my uh, team members are young some of them are freshers so, उनके साथ इंटरैक्ट करने में उनको चीजें समझाने में करवाने में आई थिंक वो आयरन मैन से ज्यादा टफ चीज तो वो पूरा दिन उसमें निकल जाता है 5 6 तक 5:30 मैं आई डी ऑफिस 7 एम बैक मैक्स 7 एम बैक एट होम देन 1 वन एंड हाफ आवर्स ऑफ व्हाटएवर वर्कआउट आई प्लान फॉर दैट डे और साइड पे नॉट स्विमिंग और रनिंग जो भी है 9 ओक्लॉक तक में डिनर कर लेता हूं एक चीज मैं बहुत अच्छी सीख है कि सोने से डेढ़ दो घंटे क्योंकि बॉडी स्टिल टाइड है तो मैं नहीं मैं स्लीप ऑफ देन अगेन सेम रूटीन दिस इज वीक डेज वीकेंड्स में हाफ अ डे आई कीप फॉर माय फियांसे आज जाएंगे बाहर दो महीने फिरेंगे बाकी वन एंड अ हाफ डेज इज फॉर प्रॉपर ट्रेनिंग ऑन वीकेंड्स आई ट्रेन अप टू लाइक 4 टू 5 आवर्स ऐसा लगता है यार वेडिंग इन ऑफिस यू नो ऐसा लगता है कि पैक्ड है वो है बट it's like it, I, it is actually freedom for me. When I tell this to people, people don't understand. See, the thing is, if tomorrow I don't, I'm not feeling well now. Let's say some kind of mental health issues come up to me, or I'm really bored. I don't know what to do in life. I always have a routine. I'm bored. I will follow my routine. I'm sad. I will follow my routine. I'm super happy today. If salary bonus promotion ho gaya, I will still follow my routine. This is freedom for me. See, I will never do anything wrong. And it's not a packed mm. day. It, it, it would seem like a packed day if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. Yes, sometimes in office, I feel like I'm doing this work. Kar raun, ke wo. But most of the times, I'm happy with what I'm doing at job. And training and working out for me is the ultimate dopamine hit. The dopamine logo ko shayad drugs training and my body is becoming fit and trust me Alta, uh, when your body is fit there is no feeling you feel but when you actually feel that routine you are feeling good from inside and you know ki, main kuch bhi sakta hon, physically what can you tell me to do which I can't Four kilometer bhag na, five hundred kilometer cycle chala na, chala luwa. Din bar dhup me khade rana, khade ho jaoon. So that feeling itself is 
giving me freedom so i don't see it as a passion but yeah i get it koi bahar se aur usko lagega kya boring life hai so when i lost weight you just feel lighter ha from from inside feel a lot of clarity when you go to work ha you go to work everything feels a lot more clearer the like the mark taste chal raha hai you have more energy you you feel good and now you don't need justification from others ki to acha hai hmm teko pata hai to acha hai ki tune kuch ukhada hai Mm. That, that is good so sir what what next what tournaments are you going to compete in are we are we going to see any bike rides anytime soon bike rides yes sir uh before early next year i'm going to get married so before that to i have to do an epic iske baad oh, congratulations ha to ke liye uske baad i don't think that mai jada kar paunga i will do that is that right uh i will do so i have done k to k ियल यूरोप इन यू एस एन ऑल so every individual race has certain slots for the world championship in their age categories so there are lots of age categories there's 20 to 25 25 to 29 from age 30 to 34 from 35 to 39 so in each age category they have certain slots ironman goa had three slots for age group 30 to 35 so if i would have come in top 3 then in that age category i would have qualified for it here there were three slots probably in ironman barcelona there would be one or two slots probably in ironman mm-hmm. let's say texas wah pe ek do slot so you have to come in the top 3 top 4 wah so if you come in the top 3 in one race you automatically qualify you just yeah, have yeah. to come in one race yeah. so they will give you that slot kisi bhi ek race so mm-hmm. most of these athletes what they do is saal mein they do four or five ironman events they go across the world mm-hmm. and they do four or five and they choose events jahan pe unko pata hai ki zyada elite log nahi aane wale like ironman goa is mostly indians do it so 5 to 10% foreigners so so ironman goa is actually a very good event for foreigners to come and qualify for world championship so similarly like probably i will pick something like ironman dubai or ironman let's say estonia uh, europe mein these are good places to go and get qualified because most of the athletes would have already qualified kisi aur race se pehle and not a lot of elite people come so are you going to uh, compete in any for the qualification have you chosen next, any uh, race no so next one year i just want to focus on building my endurance and fitness kyunki and now i have done i know where i stand so hmm. i want to build on it uh, probably do things that will enable me to run faster and that takes time cycle faster swim faster a lot of intricacies swimming ki technique sahi karni hai uh, running form sahi karni hai cycling mein ki should be able to come in at least top 10 if not top 5 and then by the time i'll be married also then i will have like a base here and probably two years three years from now i'll do the world championships as well as the So, so last question, please. Yes. So we talked about a lot of things, and it's been a 
uh, up and down journey for you which is like really inspiring you've been doing this now so any advice for people like me or people who are younger even who are not or older any advice for all of us i would like to yes give you three advices from my personal experience one is he when you are inside a tunnel to mein na roshni door ki dikhai deti hai andar andhera hota hai most of us what we do is we just keep standing there ki roshni apne paas hai aur roshni tumhare paas nahi hai you have to walk towards the light hai na life mein there will be a lot of times where you are stuck tumhare haath mein kuch nahi hoga the best thing you can do is to keep living and keep surviving times change halat badlenge if you are in a tunnel you can see the light please walk towards the light if you are stationary nothing will happen bruce lee ka ek bahut famous quote hai be water my friend it basically means mm. ki pani na hamesha behte rehna chahiye stationary water becomes drainage gutter kichad pani if it is still badbu aati hai usme pani jo behta rehta hai yes. वो अच्छा पानी होता है वो मीठा पानी होता है वो पीने लायक होता है तो कीप मूविंग ऑल दिस कुछ भी हो रहा है लाइफ में यू माइट हैव द वर्स्ट डे ऑफ योर लाइफ यू माइट थिंक यू द होल वर्ल्ड इज अगेंस्ट यू अनफॉर्चुनेटली सबकी लाइफ में कुछ ना कुछ चल रहा होता है तो यू आर नॉट द ओनली वन तो यू जस्ट हैव टू कीप मूविंग इफ यू आर ऑनेस्ट टू योर सेल्फ गुड थिंग्स विल हैपन सेकेंड पॉइंट इज is all for you, all the young people out there i have personally gone through it nobody talks about it please think from your brain not from your pants nobody will tell you this very honestly jitni tumhari sexual urges hai jitni tumhari sexual drives hai please get a control over it right from the age of 18 till the time 25 30 this thing will destroy you if you don't know how to control it okay yeah. and third advice for everyone who is in there like earning phase my lord please save money and say save usko bank account mein ring rakhna hai please learn about investing learn about i'm not saying we jaake trade karo ya mlm scheme chalao no just learn about basic investment uh, tools like mutual funds or apna debt funds fixed deposit bhi chalta hai raat ko it's not like fixed deposit is a bad thing kuch bhi invest save money invest You will be thankful you did. Ah, uh, ना salary आते ही कुछ thirty forty percent निकाल के रख दे. तुम्हारे हाथ में पैसा होगा तुम खर्च करो. Thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you for the advice and thank you for joining. It was. I, I also have a question. I also have a question. हाँ. ये इसका मतलब क्या है? Can we talk for? नहीं नहीं चलते रहने दो. ये what is the meaning of stock? So, uh, like I said ना वो मिलिट्री uh, और आर्म फोर्सेस के लिए बहुत ज्यादा मेरे को इंटरेस्ट है तो आई नो अबाउट इट सो सो व्हेन व्हेन आई आई लर्न अबाउट फील्ड मार्शल सैम मानिक शो हिज रेसिडेंस का नाम इज स्टाफ का सो व्हेन आई वाज थिंकिंग अबाउट अ नेम टू स्टार्ट व्हाट पॉडकास्ट आई वाज आई कुड नॉट थिंक ऑफ अ बेटर नेम देन इट सो आइरोनिक हिज ट्रेलर आल्सो रिलीज्ड यस्टरडे आई थिंक या या Sam Bagel. Yes, yes. Nice. Looking forward to that movie also. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Aditya. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.